um, and also um, the International um, Institute for Sustainable Development and other multiple global partners to try to find um, sustainable solutions to end hunger in uh, low income and low and middle income countries. So this paper is a systematic review that was um, a collaborative work between uh, 10 people, myself and my co-authors, which are listed from uh, different universities and two um, people that are, um, so this is the team, myself and colleagues that are economists. And the last two people are uh, um, librarians who helped us find the papers uh, to do this systematic review because we had to get um, as many papers as possible on this subject before we um, uh, actually do the, the, the process of getting the papers that um, responded the most to our research question. So what we what were you interested in is that um, we see a lot of uh, attention on the issue of youth employment but what does the evidence really say? A lot of people talk about it. Many projects have been implemented regarding youth employment, but what do we really know? And um, so we try to answer this question by uh, reviewing skill-based training interventions, which aim to increase uh, youth engagement in low and middle income country in order to better inform um, investment decisions made by donors and policymakers, because there's a lot of um, uh, beliefs about um, um, how youth view agriculture, that youth are um, leaving agriculture for some people or not interested in certain parts of agriculture that are seen as very cumbersome and that uh, the average age of the farmers are increasing in many countries, especially um, developing countries. So. How do we keep youth engaged along the value chain uh, in agriculture so that uh, we can ensure sustainable um, food production to be able to um, reach a sustainable development goal number two, which is to reduce hunger as much as possible. Since you are interested in the youth, we have to provide a definition of the youth. The youth is uh, defined in our um, research as people between the ages of 15 and 40, because several uh, institution countries, uh, you know, uh, define youth differently. Some believe youth is people between 18 and 30, others is 20 to 29, others is uh, 15 to 25, etc. Others go up to 40. So we decided to take the largest uh, interval possible uh, among uh, the different definitions of youth that we found. In, term, in terms of uh, outcome investigated, um, the, so these are the outcome that we looked at. Uh, training in agricultural related courses to help people who want to go in agriculture to have um, the skills needed to, to do so. On the job training for those who are already working in the agricultural sector, technical or vocational and education and train, education and training, and also general skills training like entrepreneurship and financial literacy, which are very important for people who want to engage in agriculture uh, successfully. So yeah, actually these are the interventions of interest. Uh, the outcomes of interest are jobs created in the agricultural sector following um, the interventions. So the intervention should lead to increased job creation in the sector, self-employment and entrepreneurship uh, in, a, in the agricultural sector along the whole value chain, provision, provision of um, extension services, uh, increased profit income earnings from agricultural activity or job, and uh, increased uh, farm productivity. Regarding the method we use since uh, we did a, a systematic review, uh, we chose uh, some in, in inclusion criteria for the papers that we reviewed. We, we did not um, review any paper that did not focus specifically on agriculture. And also um, we 
we looked at the papers and we're interested in disaggregating um, our results by gender, but over 65% of, uh, percent of the papers did not um, give us enough information to clearly specify the gender of the participants in the trainings. So we couldn't um, do that. The protocol for this study was registered on the open science framework, uh, framework prior to selection, paper selection, and uh, can be accessed um, at the following website. The Prisma flow chart gives us um, the way we, we went about it. So first of all, we, we needed to identify papers and we identified um, lots of records um, through database searching. And uh, also additional records were identified all, uh, through other sources. So we got about 8,000 papers, you know, but because we use different methods of getting the papers with the librarians, some of them were duplicates. So we had to get rid of the duplicates. And after that, um, we had um, 4,789 papers that, um, uh, uh, that respected our inclusion criteria. So we had to screen them and see what really answers our research question about um, the, the importance of uh, the interventions, uh, of uh, how the intervention uh, help you to uh, stay in the agricultural sector. Uh, you know, in terms of jobs and along the whole value chain. So we had a lot of records we dropped. We are only uh, left with, um, the screening consisted of um, using two of, two of the people in the team to review the abstracts and see if the inclusion criteria were respected. And um, once they do that, um, we, we got about 261 papers that met the eligibility criteria now um, we needed now to look at them in, in details and those papers were actually uh, read by two people again teams of two people among the eight um, economists that work on these papers on, on, on writing this paper and um, we decided in the end that um, 245 of them uh, do not really uh, answer the question because the abstract says things, but uh, when you go deeply into the paper, it doesn't um, answer our question. So we're left at the end uh, with only 16 papers that were included in the qualitative uh, synthesis that we did. And the results um, uh, show that um, uh, multiple um, uh, training. Please. Sorry. Um, is somebody talking to me or can I go on? Yeah, go ahead. Please, the another audience, can you make uh, the audio mute? Go ahead, Professor. Okay, thank you. So the results show that vocational um, training programs that uh, teach multiple skills um, are promising. Uh, one example, one such example of, uh, of, of a program was a multi-country radio and interactive uh, ICT campaign, um, which boosted the adoption of orange flesh sweet, sweet potatoes in Ghana, Tanzania, Uganda, and Burkina Faso. So the program was um, trying to teach farmers through uh, farmer radios in the, in the rural areas, how to grow uh, orange flesh sweet potatoes, both for consumption and also for sending, uh, for going on the market and selling them. And um, the results were uh, actually interesting and showed that there was a 60% uh, adoption, for example, in one of the country, uh, Ghana, for, uh, for to be more precise, there is 60% adoption of orange flesh uh, sweet potato farming for listeners versus 7% for those who did not uh, listen to the program. So it shows that we could try to reach farmers through radio programs and help them adopt um, technology or improve seeds or, or production of some uh, ag crops that can be both nutritious and also 
help them uh, generate income. Another uh, vocational program that uh, teach multiple skills and, where, and shows promise is in the Philippines. There was an infomediary campaign called Read, Surf and Text for Your Parents, which boosted youth interest in agriculture. The results of this uh, study showed that 68% of the participants, which are students, uh, reported that they now want to be involved in farming as a future occupation after uh, going through the program. So they had to get information for the parents, for example, how do we uh, get rid of some of the pests? They, they were given uh, uh, means to go online, and uh, training to go online and check or to go on websites where they, uh, they do um, support for farmers to get the information and help their parents or the people around them who had um, questions about some aspects of uh, agricultural production or, or agricultural activities that were involved in. So this boosted the students um, or secondary students' uh, interest in uh, agriculture as a future occupation. Overall, um, in, in this paper, we find that uh, there's major evidence, uh, major gaps in the evidence base. There's a lot of papers out there, but not many of them can really tell you how successful the training programs were in uh, getting skills uh, for, for youth and also in getting them interested in uh, working in the agricultural sector in the future, which is um, um, very important for building um, a sustainable system to pro provide um, food for for most of the countries that um, we, we looked at especially the developing countries and one very important thing is that despite the many studies the many interventions that are out there very few of them uh, go through evaluation so there's a chronic lack of evaluation of the effectiveness of intervention and nobody or very few of them follow uh, the trainees after they are now you know, uh, in the job market to see whether they are working in the ag sector and if they are working in the ag sector are they really successful. Um, impact evaluation that goes to this extent uh, is it's, uh, really seldom done. The gender disaggregation of outcome is also uh, not um, up to par. We wanted to do this in our study, but uh, uh, over 65% of the papers did not give us enough information to do so. And um, youth are seldom targeted or evaluated as, as the target audience. We found many papers that we ended up excluding because the word youth was there, so the paper was selected at first. But when you go in, it's not just the youth, it's uh, um, mixed groups, and we are really interested in the youth. So uh, that was also something that we um, we found in in our analysis. So in terms of policy recommendations, um, we think that investing in vocational programs for rural youth that offer training in multiple skills is a way to go. That will give the, the most bang for the buck. Also. Uh, more rigorous evaluation of the programs are needed to be able to use that as evidence to improve the program design, the interventions design, and also um, that the evaluation should go, not just stop when the program has stopped and yeah, the training is done, we have trained X number of people, but you also need to follow a few years afterwards to see if they really work in the same sector where they were trained uh, to do so and how successful they are and uh, which area of the value chain interests uh, the youth more. Um, we also think that we'll, um, it's important to estimate, to estimate returns to investment of agricultural skills training uh, because that's how you can uh, go back to the policy makers and also to the, especially the donors to be able to say, uh, this program is more, um, you know, uh, gives more returns than the other program. So if you want to have the most impact, this is, um, uh, you compare the, the different intervention in terms of return to investment and uh, uh, those who want to, the funders, the, the donors can decide to fund 
um, in terms of how um, what we have the objective are or those who don't have a specific area where they want to intervene, they can intervene where they think um, the return to investment will be, will be uh, best. So this is uh, uh, the policy recommendations that uh, came out of this study. And uh, I want to add that this study is uh, part of, we, we worked on youth employment, but we have team number eight in this CRS 2030 project um, there were seven other teams uh, who worked on different areas of the value chain in agriculture to provide either, uh, they did either a systematic review or a, a scoping review to, to provide information on other aspects of the, um, the agricultural sector that needs support to be able to build, um, uh, to find sustainable solutions for, for hunger. And overall, this project found that um, to be able to reach the SDG goal of uh, reducing hunger um, by 2030, uh, policymakers and, uh, and donors need to have a coordinated effort to double the investments uh, that are currently being uh, sent in this uh, sector in developing countries. So this is a huge investment gap uh, that um, our project found. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thanks a lot, Professor, for your kind presentations. It's very uh, good information here. So